Well, we are starting a new series this morning, and uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, but you know, it's Father's Day, and uh, I don't know. There's just something. There's just something in the atmosphere this morning. I'm just feeling like God wants to minister to His people and wants to encourage families. And as we were praying this morning in our pre-service prayer meeting, uh, we were just praying that whether you're a family of one or a family of fifteen, whatever your home looks like, whatever your Life looks like our prayer this morning was just for, for blessing on families and, and blessing on homes and blessing on this day. That can be challenging for many people, Father's Day and Mother's Day and those times when we reflect on family. You know, for many of us, in fact, I would say just about all of us, we've got some family stuff. If you don't have any family stuff going on, then you can come and pray for me after the service. Give me your, give me your anointing of peace on my life. You know, sometimes you look at families and think, oh, wow, that family, they've just got it all together. Well, that's not true. They might all have it all together for you now while they're in public. But when they get home behind the curtain where the sausages are made, things are a little bit different. Isn't that right, Brendo? He knows how to eat a good sausage. <laughs> Father's Day 2024. Well, we're launching a new series. It's called Treasure in Heaven. And it's kind of following up from our last series, which was called Because I Tithe. Because I tithe. And uh, we are in this new series. We're, we're following along. We're not talking about tithing in this series. We're talking about kingdom finance. We're talking about uh, the way that we live our lives and establish our life on the principles that the Bible teaches about our financial world. And this morning, when I'm speaking about Father's Day, Rachel said to me, you've got to link Father's Day to the idea of finance and kingdom finance. And to be, I think it's really easy. I think it's really all about leaving a legacy for your children and your children's children or leaving a legacy for your family. You know, setting your family up, whether you're a mother or a father, or an uncle or an auntie, to flourish and thrive beyond your lifetime. And that really is treasure in heaven. Because yes, Jesus is coming back, but whether it's in five years or 5,000, we have work to do to establish a treasure, a treasure trove. Or you could call it a treasure chest for the generations to come. And we don't want to make the treasure chest difficult to find. We don't want to make it that you've got to dig it up underneath X marks the spot. We want to make sure that it's right there and it's easy to find for your kids and their kids in the generations to come. So that's what I'm talking about this morning. Fathers who fill their treasure chests. Better get my notes out. Father who fill their treasure chests. Who would like to have a treasure chest full of treasure? Oh, good. Thank you. I'll, I'll catch that later. That was my mother. Hopefully I'm in the will. Treasure in heaven. <laughs> Now, I was thinking, how do we, talking about filling our treasure chests, I was thinking, who is the best, the, what's, who's the epitome of the best kind of treasure chest filler? If I wanted to find the, the, uh, you know, the, the ultimate character that, that can go after and find and, and fill and, 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 and uh, save the, the treasure chest, who am I looking at? Who am I looking for? Who's the best? Brendan Blackbeard. I think you're right. I think you're onto something. In fact, let's go down that. Let's, let's take that path. Let's change a message. So instead of what I was going to preach on, we're going to preach a new message this morning. It's called How Pirates Fill Their Treasure Chest. So don't worry about these notes. Forget about them. Actually, let's just, I'll ask you some questions. This will, I'll take a poll. If you get most of these questions right, I'll change my message and we'll preach Brendan's message. So here's a question for you. Number one, why don't pirates shower before they walk the plank? That's a very logical answer. They, that person said because they're going to get wet anyway, because they're going to wash up on shore. Uh, how much, oh, I didn't like that. How much, how much does it cost a pirate? To get his ear pierced. About a buccaneer. <laughs> Devon liked that one. He was like, that's a good one, Pastor Luke. What's a, pir what's a pirate's favourite exercise? You get this one. This is an easy one. You, come on. The plank. The plank. Yeah, good one, Jace. Well done. And, and I've got a couple more here. What, why do pirates, how do pirates prefer to communicate? Eye to eye. I don't. That was a week, wasn't it? That was a terrible one. All right, we'll make a note. Don't use that one again. Now, this is, this is my favourite. I was going to, this is so, I love this one so much. I was going to tell it this morning in the pre-service, but I felt like Holy Spirit saying, no, wait, because this is a powerful, a powerful moment in the service later on. So this is this one. So how do you, 
What do you call a pirate with two eyes, two legs and two hands? A beginner. I knew my nan would like that one. She's straight into the, You'll use that one. She'll be calling the John Laws radio show on 2HD. That'll, make, that'll be a headline joke, that one. So how do, how do fathers, let's say, how do pirates, how do fathers, how do we as families fill our treasure chest? So another thing, the first thing that, that we do, the first thing pirates do, the first thing you're going to do, is they're going to know that the treasure chest, the treasure hunting is all about others. This is what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. He says this, he says, Don't store up treasure here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasure in heaven. Turn to the person next to you and say, in heaven. Amen. That's where you store your treasure, in heaven. Where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, listen to this, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. And see, where pirates get this wrong, where, 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 Black, was it Blackbeard? where Blackbeard gets this wrong is they make the treasure all about them. See, great dads, great mums, on the other hand, their marriage is actually all about their spouse. You see, so their, their family life is actually all about their children. It's not doing everything for their children, but it's leading their children. It's growing healthy family. It is, in fact, sometimes saying no to their children. In fact, to be honest, in my experience, you often as a parent say no a lot more than you say yes. But your children really appreciate the yes when they get it, if ever. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 says this. It says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. And that is the way that we deal with ego in our lives. You know, God's playbook to help men particularly deal with their ego is in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. And fathers, this is a word for us this morning. It says this, it says, For husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. How much did he love the church? Well, so much that he gave his life up for her. It's always wives first, husbands. And all the wives go, Amen. Woo. Sacrifice is the antidote to selfishness. Let's be the pirates that put others first, the fathers that put our kids first, the fathers that put our wives first. Number two, if we want to fill our treasure chest, we have to illuminate the hidden places. You know, you can't go on a treasure hunt without a torch. You can't plunge the caves, the lost treasures lying in without seeing where you're going and, and, and really the kind of fathers, the kind of mothers, the kind of leaders that we want to be are the kind of people that are willing to illuminate the things that are in the hidden places of our lives. It's how we store up treasure here on earth. In James chapter 5, verse 16, this is what it looks like to illuminate dark places. Confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. For tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. If you're willing to what? Confess and acknowledge. Light up the dark things that you might want to keep hidden. Share your stuff with your friends and family and church. Here's my question to you. Fathers, men, who sees you? Who sees you? I mean, no, no, not who's looking at you, because I know that your wives and, you know, they, they stare at you with, you know, you know twinkly eyes. Oh, I love you so much. Not... Amen. Preach that. <laughs> but who really sees you? You know, when someone says, how are you going? And you go, yeah, good. And they say, no, how are you going? Who's asking you that question? Because that should be a question that someone's asking you at least every week. Hey, Matt, how are you going? Yeah, good. You're good, Matt. How are you going? Maybe you could be one of those people that isn't just the, hey, how are you going, people? You could be one of those people that's the, hey, how are you going kind of people. Who sees you? Because the kind of people that leave an inheritance for their children are willing to have others be involved in the stuff that's going on in their life. You've got to light it up because other people won't light it up for you. You've got to be willing to shine a light on it yourself. And here's a few ways that you can do that very practically. One, and the church helps with this, is by going to and being involved in and being vulnerable in and opening a life group 
where you meet regularly with other people like you, good friends who you can do real life with. You can go deep and you can share your story and they can ask you the hard questions and you can be willing to tell them the difficult answers. Life groups are a place for that. Or even more powerful than that is serving together in the local church. The Bible talks about iron sharpening iron. I love it. In the, One of the highlights of my week is our pre-service team meeting in the front room of church here on a Sunday morning where other passionate, like-minded people who want to serve the local church get together. And it's also probably where some of the most difficult times come, where there's some offence and there's some trouble and there's some tension and there's a little bit of wrestling between what we should do and how it should be done. But we're doing it together and serving others kind of shows us the limits of our capacity and our emotional uh, boundaries. <laughs> and, but it, <clears throat> what it also does is it stops us hiding. If you want to stop hiding, start serving. If you want to shine a light on your life, get involved in serving in the local church, life groups, teams, and just being in the room. You know, you guys should be commended today for being here in the room because in our day and age, there is so much vying for your attention, whether it's on your screen or your big screen at home or whether it's the stuff that's going on in our community. There's so many good things to do, so many great places to be, but you have decided to be here in the local church. You have said, this is going to be the most important thing for my family this week. And these spiritual disciplines, they flip the switch from darkness to discovery and they illuminate the treasure in your life and in the treasure that's in the lives around you. So I want to commend and encourage you. You've done the right thing today. You're in the right place. Your week this week is going to be better and brighter because you have decided to be here in the room today. So well done, pirates. Number two, what you do is you illuminate the hidden places. And number three, this is what pirates do who stir up treasure in heaven. They steer their ship. They take a hold of the wheel of their life. You can't live your life on autopilot unless you expect to be shipwrecked. <laughs> and that's not your destiny. Your destiny is to sail the seven seas and find treasure for yourself and your family. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 9 says this, In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Now, this is a great verse because what it shows us here is that the Lord establishes their steps if they have a plan. In their hearts, humans plan their course. I mean, how can the Lord establish your steps if you have nowhere to go? What's he establishing? That you're standing still? I want to be the kind of person that the Lord establishes my, not just my step, <laughs> but my step that I'm going somewhere, that I have a plan, that I'm moving forward, that I'm not stuck, I'm not stayed, I'm not restricted, I'm not held back, but I've got some fresh vision for my life and the life of my family and we're going somewhere together. And yes, it might not always work out just the way that I want it to, but what I do know is if I'm moving forward, if I'm going somewhere, then the promise is that the Lord will establish every step I take. What a promise that even if we're heading in the wrong direction, <laughs> Sometime or other, God's going to say, I'm going to establish this step so you've got a good footing to begin to turn around. <laughs> the Lord establishes your steps. He establishes the steps of those who plan their course. Number four, they're kind of not so much like Blackbeard. I'm not sure about Blackbeard. But pirates and, and fathers who store up for themselves treasure in heaven for their family and their Kids, kids, generations to come. They're more like Jack Sparrow, not Captain Hook. Now, do you know who Jack Sparrow is? Have a look on the screen here. I'll show you who he is. He was in that, those movies, The Pirates of the Caribbean. How many of those are there? Is there seven Pirates of Caribbean? How many have we got? Four, six. How many Caribbeans have we got? Five Pirates of the Caribbean, um, Dead Man's Chest. What is it? Pirates of the Caribbean. Skull and Crossbones are here. What, what are the titles of the... Oh, Curse of the Black Pearl. Dead Man's Chest. Dead Man's Chest. Return of the Jedi. Yeah, right. So this is, the, this is the admiral of the Navy vessel at the top here, and he says to Jack Sparrow, you're without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. Jack Sparrow. He's like, but you have heard of me. <laughs> I mean, I just love, I love that. Hey, Captain Hook, I mean, Captain Hook's a real downer. He's just a real pest. Blast that Peter Pan. If I could only find his hideout, I'd trap him in his lair. I mean, this guy has got the ego problem. He's insecure. He's trying to take a little boy and kill a little boy because he's afraid of death himself. I mean, he's just so insecure. You know, I don't want to be the kind of father, the kind of man that is so insecure. I'm trying to pull everyone else down so that I can be seen as, as a hero. I, I, want to, I don't want to be like that. I want to be more like Jack Sparrow. So 
so I'll just see how we go. Like it's like, and have a little bit of fun with life. You know, this isn't just a Jack Sparrow idea. This is a biblical idea. In Psalm chapter 16, verse 11, the Bible says, You show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. I mean, there's some stuff that we're allowed to be happy about, that we can get excited about, that we can laugh and that we can play with. At your right hand, the hand of authority of God, are pleasures forevermore. So you can be strong, you can be powerful without being insecure and pulling other people down. The Bible says that if you're walking with God on the path of life, with Him in His presence, there is what? Fullness of joy. Come on, let's be the kind of people, the kind of fathers, the kind of mothers that don't take ourselves too seriously. It's going to make a difference. I don't kind of like hanging around people that take themselves too seriously. I mean, I like passionate people and I like people that are intentional, but sometimes people that are intense. Yeah, intensity isn't a fruit of the Spirit. I think I heard Nicky Gumbel say that. Here's another question for you but as I begin to wrap up and bring the team up. Are you having fun? I want to ask you that question. Are you having fun? You know, the Christian life is a life that should bring joy into your family. You know, when you walk into a person's home, you can kind of tell if this is a fun home. If this home's full of joy, you can kind of tell. Sometimes when you walk into people's homes, you know, you walk in upbeat, and you, when you cross the threshold, the life just drains out of you. It's like the floor sucks the life out of you. What's happening in this place? Let's be the kind of families, the kind of homes, the kind of church. When people walk through the door, there's some buoyancy in the atmosphere. There's some joy and, and it's a fruit of the Spirit. There's some Holy Spirit kind of atmosphere in the room. And when people encounter it, they're lifted up. They're not pulled down. Finally, the Blackbeards, the Jack Sparrows, the fathers who fill their treasure chests are fifth and finally having their eye on heaven. because they've got a patch on the other eye. They've got their eye on heaven. And, or well, they've got one of those telescopes. You've seen those on the, when they're looking toward the, looking heavenward, looking toward her, what, the horizon. The ultimate treasure is easy to find. The ultimate treasure, in fact, is right here, right now. Not hidden. X marks the spot is right here. You know, X marks the spot. It's the cross, right? It's the ultimate X marks the spot. It, it's, the, it's the map toward the greatest treasure of all. And, and, and His name on that cross is Jesus. When you find the treasure, you find a person and you find Jesus. And He's inviting you today, if you haven't already, to find Him or maybe find Him afresh today. Dad, have you been fumbling around with that treasure map for years and never getting where you wanted to go? Well, guess what? Today, you have Jack Sparrow your way, stumbled your way across onto the greatest treasure of all. X marks the spot, the cross of Jesus Christ. And, and, and this is the cross here that reveals the greatest treasure of all. And it's your salvation, your salvation. For you, for your family, for your children, for your children's children, a treasure in heaven, an eternal treasure that moth and rust and thieves cannot get a hold of. So what I want to invite us to, let me read this verse. This is the invitation from Jesus today for you to discover him. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30, it says this. Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? I wonder what you've been looking for. I wonder what you've been waiting for. The Bible says, come to me. This is Jesus speaking. Come to me and I will refresh your life for I am your oasis. Right, I'm the ultimate place to go. I am the treasure you've been looking for. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble and easy to please. You know, he's the ultimate. Our Father in heaven is the ultimate Father, the Father to follow. The model to map our lives after is the Father in heaven. And Jesus is saying, follow me. I'm the God that's gentle, humble, easy to please, and you'll find refreshment and rest in me. For all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. What a promise. 
What a promise. And that's my prayer for us this morning on this Father's Day, that we will begin to store up for ourselves treasure in heaven, not just for you, but for your family and for your kids and for their kids. And it all starts with our relationship with the ultimate treasure of all, Jesus Christ on the cross. X marks the spot. So would you pray with me this morning? Everybody close their eyes, bow their heads. I want to pray over every single person in this room or listening online later. If you're in the room this morning and you want to make a commitment to follow Jesus, you know you've, you're in here at the right place at the right time. This isn't an accident. You're not here by chance or coincidence, but you know this moment in time is for you. It's for you to, to confess that you need Jesus in your life. And if that's you, before I pray, why don't you just, while every head's bowed, every eye closed, say, yeah, Luke, that's me. And raise your hand just so I can see who you are, if that's you. Yep, yep, yep. If there's anybody else, this is your moment to respond. I see your hands. That's great. As we pray this prayer, church, for those of us, whether we're praying it for the first time or we're praying it again, I want this prayer really to just stir us to see that the ultimate treasure that we can store up is that of our relationship with Jesus Christ for ourselves, for our kids, for our kids' kids. It's better than anything you can leave in their will or anything that you can bury under a tree. So church, why don't you pray after me? Jesus, this is my decision. Today I say yes to you. You died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. I invite you to be my saviour. Come into my life. Forgive my sin. Fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks, Rachel.